the cathedral and it's a lovely place to visit. So you are welcome to come inshallah to visit the place. So the objectives uh, for this session for me, inshallah, is that by the end of the session, you will be able to prescribe insulin for bolus, for meals and snacks for a newly diagnosed child. Uh, you'll be able to make changes on the timings uh, and the dose of the meals based on the fat and protein content of the meal. And we will also think about whether we need to count or put into account the protein and the fat in the meals in the insulin calculation. So this is the, the formula that we use in University Hospital of North Durham. This is based on the ISPAD guidelines and the British Society of Pediatrics and Endocrine. And what we use very simply is less than five years of age, we give 0.5 units per kg per 24 hours. And that's the total daily insulin for the child. If they're more than five years, but prepubertal, we give 0.7 units per 24 per hour. If they're pubertal, adolescents or young adults, we go up to one unit per kilogram per 24 hours. If they present with ketosis, sometimes children still have ketosis, but they're not in DKA. We go to the next age group um, and we sometimes go up higher than one unit. So for example, if we have a seven-year-old who's ketotic, according to this formula, we'll give them 0.7 units per kg per 24 hours. However, because their ketotic will go up to the next stage, which is one unit per kg per 24 hours. Uh, this is obviously a very uh, formulated way. Every child differs. So this is just to start off um, the dose of insulin per day, and then we follow that up and make changes, whether they're still in hospital or we can do that when they are at home. Um, so if we're happy with that, we get the total daily dose. The formula that we use, and there are quite a few formulas, but this is the one that seems to work for us, is 300 divided by the total daily insulin that the child needs. And this is, again, the initial calculations. This will give us carbohydrates in grams. El uh, misel, if total daily dose, men el hezbal, or nehab, like the 30 units, uh, we divide 300 divided by 30, and that will give us 10 grams. So this child's uh, carbohydrate ratio would be one unit for 10 grams, and so Following this, we also have the calculation for the long acting. It's different. I can just say it quickly, but the main focus of my uh, talk today is uh, for uh, carbohydrate boluses. Um, the, the, for the long acting, we can give either 50% for the total daily dose. If we are using something like Degladec, which we have, we know has um, a longer half life, we use 40% of the total daily dose. So following that, we look at the patient's um, readings. These can be self-monitoring uh, glucose, uh, we can use the flash monitoring, Libra, continuous glucose monitoring. And we start to see how the patient is interacting with our doses. very good, all within target, the readings in green. Uh, sorry, this is in uh, millimoles, uh, yani just multiplied by 20 for ease. So we look at hypoglycemia of 3.9 and less, al uh, hawaili al min 16 milligrams. We will see in the last dose with the launch of the launch of the three hours later, actually, he dropped. فداي يقول لنا ان الدوز بتاعته يمكن اعلى من ما هو محتاج فاذا كنا حاطينه على 1 يونت تو 10 جرامز نقلل له الدوز شويه ندي له 1 يونت تو 12 جرامز اند سو طبعا مش بس الجرامز او الريشيوز هي اللي ممكن تفرق ممكن يكون حط كاربس كاربوهيدريتس اكتر من اللي كلها well, estimation of carbohydrates is very important. We have to go back and see how he uh, estimates his carbs. Uh, food labels, Dr. Rafaq, I talked about them very much, but this is what will be able to do in the next year, or in the next year, or in the next year. 
اكل البيت بيبقى فيه طرق ثانيه زملاء ان الدايتيشنز بيعملوها من ناحيه اما فيجوال جايد يعني كميه الاكل مثلا اللي في طبق الرز قد ايه قد كف الطفل اصغر اقل وهكذا فبنعرف منها الكربوهيدرات كونتنت اوف ثاني خلي بالكم ان انا كل ده مركزه على الكربوهيدرات لسه ما جبتش سيره البروتين او فات او ممكن الطفل يكون عمل اكسرسايز وعشان كده البلاد جلوكوز بتاعه نزل ففي الحالة دي بتبقى القصة مش إن إحنا نقلل الريشيو في كل الأيام لكن ممكن نقلل الريشيو في الأيام اللي هو أكتف أو عنده فيها إكسرسايز. ممكن سبب تاني إن هو يكون ما أكلش كل أكله فمثلا كان عامل حسابه إنه هياكل 70 جرامز therefore خد 2.5 يونتس لكن ما أكلش ما كملش ال 70 جرامز دول هما آه في الحالة دي من بنقول للأهل إن هما يدوا اكسترا كربوهيدرات عن اللي ما كلهاش يعني لو من ال 70 جرامز مثلا خد اونلي 40 يبقى 30 جرامز اوف كربوهيدرات دولت ممكن ياخدهم آه في كوبايتين عصير أو كوباية عصير وبسكوتة أو حاجة زي كده بعد الأكل. لكن we really stress that the insulin needs to be given before meals and our current policy is to do this for all age groups. So uh, in the past, we used to say we give the insulin after the meal. لحسن تودلر ممكن يبطل يأكل أو كده ويخش في هيبوجلاسيميا. دلوقتي بقينا بندي um, ال ال insulin before the meal في كل الأعمار وأنا ه ه هشرح الموضوع ده ليه بعد. دي بقى صورة تانية خالص. Uh, this is a continuous glucose monitor on a patient who was on a pump. ولو تشوفوا معايا هتلاقوا إن في دايما بيكس مع كل الميلز واضح الكلام ده يا جماعه فده العكس تماما عن السلايد اللي قبل كده فده طفل او اكشلي ذا يونج بيرسون هي واز اباوت 14 الانسولين اللي هو اخده مش مكفي ان هو يفضل ودن تارجت هنعكس بالظبط الصوره اللي قلناها قبل كده هل هو عدد الكربوهيدرات بتاعته صح هل هو خد الانسولين قبل الاكل بمده كافيه؟ نرجع للنقطه دي تاني. هل ادى الدوز اللي كالكوليتد بالنسبه له في البامب او الـ او وات ايفر هيز يوزنج از كالكوليشن. هل الانجكشن سايتس بتاعته كويسه؟ لان لو الانجكشن سايتس فيها فايبروزيس او كده هي نوت بي ايبل تو ابسورب ذا انسولين اند سو اون اند سو فورث. سو دي الحاجات اللي بنفكر فيها لما بنلاقي Uh, continuous glucose monitoring بالشكل ده. So to sum it up really, the changes that we're doing with insulin dose and uh, I'm still concentrating on the carbohydrate ratios. Uh, we look at the self-monitoring uh, blood glucose measurements, the continuous glucose monitoring or flash monitoring. If the blood glucose goes to target, which is for us around uh, from 70 to 130 milligrams uh, after uh, meals, Uh, and it is within target, then the insulin was given 20 minutes before meal, then we think that we got it right. Our calculations are right. If it's lower than target, we think about all the other things, but if we're going to change the insulin, we'll probably need to give them less insulin. If the, it was actually higher than target, say, Mashofna, if it's slightly applicable, and both the annual carbohydrate counting, and injection sites, carbohydrate calculations, technique, and then the can be يحط القلم مثلا ويدي الانجكشن وما يستناش 10 ثواني فالانسولين بيطلع بره هي داز نوت هاف اول ذا توز. دلوقتي نشرح شويه وات داز ميل انسولين ريلي كفر. ذا ثيوري از ذات ات كفرز ذا دايجستيف كاربوهيدريتس ذات اوف تشينج انتو جلوكوز اند سمول اماونتس اوف ذا بروتين اند فات. تو اندرستاند ذات وي نيد تو نو ذا فيسيولوجي اوف ذا انسولين that the fast acting insulin starts about 15 to 30 minutes from injection. It peaks at 60 minutes and it lasts for four to six hours. Why shank it up? Lama midi insulin lazim midi insulin abdil meal with 20 minutes. And otherwise, uh, glucose will be absorbed if the insulin is just being given. And by the time the insulin works, we will find that the uh, blood glucose has gone up and the insulin cannot deal with it. So we can see this, this curve here. 
لو باين عندنا ان uh, هنا ال with red is the meal with blue is the insulin if they're given at the same time at the table by the time the insulin starts working 30 minutes it peaks in an hour and let in the الحاله دي الجلوكوز is actually being absorbed and the blood glucose is higher than target so the insulin is working on a higher level than what it was intended to while if we give the insulin 30 minutes before by the time the insulin is working the the food is at its peak and we get better targets نرجع للسلايد ده والدكتوره وفاء ادتنا ازاي نقرا الفود ليبلز لو نبص على الميل دي 100 grams of this meal Um, what do you think? Is it high carbs, low carbs, uh, balanced meals? لو ممكن أشوف ال ال audience كده ونشوف ال ال ولا مش ممكن نعمل كده. حضرتك ميتت يا دكتور سام. دكتور الاجابه ال this is a very high carb meal it's got 82 grams of carbohydrates in 100 grams so this is really really high So although I cannot see you, I'll ask you to take one minute and calculate the insulin for uh, this meal, 82 or let's say 83 grams of carbohydrate uh, with a carb ratio of one to 30. So the, the calculation is we divide the number of carbs on 30, so 80, let's say 83 over 30 ادينا حوالي 2.5 3 يونتس تمام زي ما قلت اذا ادينا الانسولين ده مع الاكل على طول هنلاقي ان هيطلع هاير ذان تارجت بيكوز اتس سوتش ا هاي كاربوهيدرات ميل يو سي ذات ات جوز ابوف تارجت ايفن اف يو جيف بيفور 20 مينتس بيفور ذا ميل اند ذاتس واي وي اولويز اسك patients زي ما الدكتور وفاء كانت بتقول ان هم ياخدوا بالانس ميلز يعني الميل يبقى فيها 55% كاربوهيدراتس 30% بروتين 20 25% فات and we go for the um, unsaturated fat as well طيب نبص على دهيت هنلاقي ان الكالوريز فيها اقل كتير جدا 210 هنلاقي الكربوهيدرات فيها 40 And the fat is very, very limited, 2.5, and the protein is 8 grams. So this is a really uh, healthy um, mixed uh, meal, really good variation. But if we take this or we the insulin, we have 40 divided by 30, and how many? 1.5 units. For this meal. Here we see the effect of balanced meal and the timing of insulin. And again, if we give the insulin at the same time of food, although it's a balanced meal, by the time the insulin work, it has been absorbed. And we see that it is mostly within target, but there, it is on the higher range of um, the target. And that will have an effect on the very good control which looks at the timing range and the hemoglobin A1C. Well, if we give the insulin 20 minutes before, we can see that the peak of the insulin agrees with the peak of the food, and we have much better readings, mostly in targets for the whole time. Okay. Now, if we go to something that's really high calorie, really high fat, high protein, and this is when we start to think whether we need to give insulin uh, for fat or protein. So I'm giving the example of the Big Mac. This is out of the McDonald's um, website. 
And we can see that this Big Mac has 563 calories in 219 grams, very high carbohydrate calories. Carbohydrates are 44%, so they're 18%, while it's mostly fat and protein. And you can see that this is very high. So traditionally, if we're going to give the insulin for this meal, how much insulin would we give? You can go back to your pen and paper and think about it. Yeah, so we'll probably give again about 1.5 units of insulin. Do you think that will work with this with this meal? Do you think that would be enough? I don't think so. So um, this is one of the most uh, agreed upon um, ways of giving insulin for fat and protein, high fat or high protein meals. And I'll come to this in a minute later. This is all of these slides are adopted from the Birmingham Children's Hospital. Um, and they're happy for us to share. So there's no plagiarism or anything like that. And we can see that if we give the insulin with the meal, we will have a very prolonged and delayed uh, areas of higher than carbon. And that's for a, quite a number of reasons. One is that the presence of fat in the meal delays the absorption. So we find that the effect of the meal is going for longer. It can go up to seven hours when there is still uh, absorption. Uh, the second thing is that the insulin that is given initially will not cover this. So we'll have all of those delayed um, higher than target peaks. So the current uh, most agreed upon uh, way of doing this is to actually give an extra 25% if we see that the uh, fat is more than 40 grams. And you can go higher and higher for the more fatty meals. So the meal that we looked at, it had actually 33 grams. So that's within, within, the, within this range. So we give 25% more. So if we've given uh, for the carbohydrates 1.5, we'll probably go to two or even more. Uh, and we need to divide this those as well to cover this initial peak and then the second peak. So if this patient is on a pump, we give them the initial dose, 50% of the calculated dose, 20 minutes before the meal. And then we give them the other 50%, 120, uh, over 120 minutes. So that's like a dual bolus or a square bolus. If this patient is on MDI, which is multiple daily doses injection, then we give 50% of the dose 20 minutes before and the other 50% of the dose in 60 minutes. So um, to give an example, if we decided to give this child, say, uh, five, let's say six units of insulin, not for this uh, ratio, but if it's six units per insulin, hanidilu, three units, ablil uh, akl وهنديله ال 3 units الباقية بعد ما يكون خلص أكل بساعة وفي الحالة دي هنوصل ل better um, control all within target but it will need to have two doses as you can see the blue is the insulin there are quite a few other suggested algorithms one of them is to give one unit of insulin for every 100 uh, kilocalories of uh, that are taken from protein and fat. So in this case, the calculation is not based on grams, it's based on uh, the calories. Uh, we have to be very careful that needs, this needs to be individualized and uh, some patients can react with this with hypoglycemia because we're giving extra uh, insulin than what is provided with carbs and we give it before the meal. And, the, and in that case, we can give them a risk of hypoglycemia because by the time the peak from the protein or the fat is there, they have already had more insulin. If we have insulin on protein and fat, we have insulin zieta, and it's 20 minutes before the meal. And if the fat and protein have absorbed later, it will be insulin that will be hypoglycemia. Therefore, we need to give this extra insulin as a portion of the calculated sa'al sa'atin ba'dilak. But I mean, fashion, we have the total dose that we have been given from the carbohydrates and protein before the meal. 
if we're going to count the protein and the fat, we have to give it later than that. في methods تانية كمان بتتكلم على إن إحنا ندي 30-60% insulin extra for high protein and high fat. Uh, again, uh, we have to give it divided. We cannot give it all in one bolus. إزاي بالضبط ندي قد إيه في algorithms كتيرة. بس I have to admit we very rarely use this method. Um, لأسباب كتيرة. أولا تسهيل على عيانين يعني they have enough to worry about in terms of carbohydrate counting. If we find that there are times when, although they've done all the right things in terms of carbohydrate counting and um, uh, giving the injection in the right place, giving it in the right time and so on, and we still have peaks after that, we see that if we're looking at continuous glucose monitoring for uh, Libra, then we can consider that and give them this advice. But the usual uh, routine advice is carbohydrate counting, and we very rarely use the high protein um, or high fat uh, calculations. In that. Uh, this is also another burden uh, for the patient to have two boluses if they are on pens. Uh, it is, yeah, we, we try very hard in Homa to get the insulin in the first place, get it before the meal, get it 20 minutes before the meal. So if we're going to think that, you know, an hour after the meal, they're going to have another one, it can be a little bit ambitious. طبعاً لو العيان يقدر يعمل الحكاية دي شيء جميل وممتاز. It works better العيانين اللي على pump in Homa, they will program it. They will not have to think about it again and give another injection after the meal. والعيانين اللي على CGM as well. لأنهم هنبقى عارفين مع الفود دايري الاكسكرشنز بتاعت الميلز بتاعتي. الحقيقه الهايبريد بامبس بتعمل لنا الموضوع ده من نفسها فبنلاقي ان as the pump feels that the, the glucose level is above target it gives further policies or it increases the basal بس طبعا احنا عارفين ان مش كل العيانين ممكن يكونوا على الريجيمنت ده. The other tactics that may be um, easier about how to get the patient to be in target, again, this is from Birmingham's Women and Children Hospital. Um, in terms of the nutritional tactic, three meals that are well balanced. Uh, to be honest, I don't agree with the snacks. Children usually don't need snacks. Their, their food, especially children with diabetes, their meals should be covering. It should be it should have all the nutrition that they need. And as I advised before, we need to um, give the insulin 20 minutes before. And if we do that, you can see that we have a nice uniform uh, glucose curve. If the children are going to have snacks, they will need to have insulin with unless it's really low carb snacks. أحسن low carb snacks الحاجات اللي فيها fiber كتير زي السلطة, خيار, حاجات زي دي الحاجات دي متوفرة. Even the, the, if they're going to have protein or fat snacks so that we don't need to give them insulin, لازم نرجع تاني نفكر هل فيها calories enough that will need the insulin or not. We actually advise our patients to have insulin even if we're going to give half a unit. So is the IN carb ratio to uh, 1 to 10, we'll have a very low carb, even 5 grams, we advise that they get the snack. If they have higher than that in terms of carbs, and if they have multiple snacks, you'll see that they will need even more injections, in this case, with the three meals and the two snacks, five injections, and we still have some areas that are above um, the, the target. Oh, sorry. Um, if the patient is having a lot of snacks that are high carb, even if he has lots and lots of insulin, unfortunately, uh, the target is not met. Uh, that's why it's really important to get children into the habit. the absorption is less. And that's why we see that um, 
we find that the it is better to give the long acting in the buttocks. Um, the internet okay, and Andy made the sign. تمام شكرا فده الكيرف اللي بيورينا لو ادينا الانسولين ان ذا ارمز ودينا 20 minutes before meal you can see that the levels are really good however if we give it at the start of the meal it goes higher if we give it post meal it, it, it's even worse another easier strategy بالذات لو شجعنا الاطفال عليها من الاول is the activity the activity gets the muscles to work. They um, open up gates for insulin. So the blood glucose is absorbed into the muscles. It's metabolized easily. So um, they, we don't have the excursions after the meals and therefore the time in range is better. I hope I have not gone over time and I'm leaving a few minutes for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. And this Thank is you very much. Of our our team, part of our team, we were on a team day out a few years ago now. We couldn't do that now for a moment. Thank you very much, Professor Suzanne, for your conclusive presentation. Really, all of us have enjoyed this talk. Uh, and I respect you from here in Cairo and see you near, inshallah, in Cairo. This is number one. Number two, forgive me because all the CVs have been uh, got by our Professor Samah Taufi uh, as an order. I'm online. I have just only technical problem with my laptop. Uh, yes. I use uh, my uh, daughter laptop. Thank you very much indeed. Let okay. me ask Dr. Susan uh, a few basic questions. Dr. Susan? Uh, thank you very much for your excellent presentation, but may I ask you, when can we, we, when can we say that uh, this diet is of high protein and, fat, and high fat? Are okay. there special issues? Yes, uh, I'll come back to my slides. So high carbohydrate, if it has 55% carbohydrates or more. So more than 55 is high carbohydrate. A balanced meal will have uh, around 40 to 50% carbohydrates, uh, 20 to 40% fat, and unsaturated fat is better, and 10 to 20 of protein. Uh, more than 40 grams of fat will be looked at as a high fat and more than uh, 30 to 40 grams of protein is looked at as a high protein. Okay, uh, I will ask you a basic question. How to convert calories into grams of carb? Uh, it's, you, you get the, the carbs in the food. If it's a label, it will say, uh, from biochemistry, every gram of carbs or proteins gives four uh, calories and every gram of fat gives nine calories. So if you have the calories of the food and you don't have how much carbohydrate and protein and fat in it, it's very difficult because they all mix together. So say you're, you're looking at the calorie content of um, a sandwich, for example. It, you, you buy the sandwich and the uh, calorie content is there. If they do not mention how much carbs in it, it is very difficult to um, get the carbs. But when we teach children uh, and families with diabetes, we look into what is in the sandwich. So sandwiches and then we have a toast the whole. But one slice is anything between 12 to 15 grams of carbs. Um, depending on the thickness and so on. So it's a kind of sandwich that he I get protein, يعني في مثلا جبنة أو تونة أو كده يبقى بس الكربوهيدرات هي الموجودة. لو في كمان كربوهيدرات يعني لو حاطين عليه مثلا حاطين فيه مربى أو حاطين فيه حاجة فيها carbs, we have to count the carbs within that. Uh, ولما بنبص عليها كلها بنبتدي نحسب إذا كانوا هيحطوا زبدة مثلا يبقى هنحسب إن الزبدة دي um, uh, 
لما ننقل من لو عندنا كل الساندويتش ده فيه قد ايه كالوريز صعب جدا نطلع منه قد ايه كاربس اند فات اند بروتين انليس وي نو واتس ان ذير اند وي تيك ات فروم ذير Okay, thank you very much. What is the most practical way you teach your uh, patient and their caregiver how to uh, cover uh, 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 protein and fat? Actually, very rarely. The most, uh, included. Practical, the most common way you use it. The most common is one unit for 100 calories from fat or protein. This okay. is the, the easiest. So if they're going to have Uh, quite a, a big meal that has proteins and uh, fat, and they count ca they count the carbs. And if it is, if they find that the carbs are not covering, or the insulin for the carbs is not covering, and they still have higher than target, then we ask them to look at the fat and protein. Uh, grams of fat are nine calories. So if the meal has 50 grams of fat, we're looking at 450 calories. And therefore, about 4.5 units extra. If it's got like 100 grams of this is huge, 100 grams of protein is huge. Uh, this will give them 400 calories, therefore, an extra four units of insulin plus the uh, insulin that they need for the carbs. But the thing is, these extra nine units cannot be given immediately before the meal. They have to give it like an hour after the meal. Otherwise, they'll have a lot of insulin. Uh, the insulin will cover only the carbs. And when the excursion, when the protein and fat are absorbed and are utilized and they start to give the uh, calories and glucose with them, the insulin has stopped working. And now they are going to, um, and before that, they will go into hypoglycemia. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. You, you make this issue very simple, very clear. Thank you for your contribution. Looking forward to seeing you soon, inshallah, Dr. Suzanne. Inshallah. Thank, thank you very much. And thank hope you have a, a very successful conference, inshallah. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye.